those who will go to hell part two first lesson first corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 to 10 second lesson galatians chapter 5 verses 20 to 21 golden text revelation chapter 21 verse 8 quote Satan is deceiving the whole world today that if you steal, fornicate, and commit all forms of abomination, but call on Jesus as your personal Savior, you are saved. That since Jesus Christ came and shed his blood for the redemption of sinners, you can go ahead drinking wine, committing adultery, murdering, and coveting and be licentious this is an outright deception all those who are led by those precepts are going headlong into hell and they are in hell right now this is no time for a false claim or a time for showing false front it is no time for saying that somebody is God, Christ, or an angel. But it is time for everyone to repent and refrain from sin and to abide with God's righteous principles. I want to point out to you those who are the children of perdition. Have you noticed? what the golden text are you are you have you noticed what the golden text has in context those who practice those things are in hell right now you are not forced to bound you are not forced or bound to do what is right but you must know that any sin that you commit leads you into hell. Let it become known to you that from time immemorial all sinners have their abode in hell till now. Is there any person in the world that can point to any portion of the Bible that says if a person fornicates, steals, commit adultery, and indulges in lawlessness that such a person will inherit God's kingdom? Let such a person come out and prove his case. How can you have hope of entering into God's kingdom and at the same time remain in lawlessness? This shows that you have no hope at all. Some people, having seen that they are lawless, have decided not to attend any church, for they conclude that they, that they are good for nothing and are in hell. In this, they are correct. There are others also who are aware that they are chronic, immoral persons, yet they are the best church goers. What is the sense in going to church when you are lawless? Are you not the same as the one who does not attend any church at all? However, the sheep must be separated from the goats right now. Separating the sheep from the goats. This is the time to separate the sheep from the goats. Since you know that you are a goat, why do you come in here? We do not keep goats here. You know that the thief only comes to steal. Since you are licentious or a sex maniac, your intention is to come and corrupt the sheep that are kept chaste and undefiled 
by God, your destination is in hell and the sheep only are for heaven. Today, many people are rushing into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star with the intention of being healed of their sicknesses or to have an improved condition of life. But little do they think of refraining from sins. Christ said, Come to me, all of you who are loaded with every burden, and I will give you rest. He further said that it is the sick that looks for the physician, and not the physician that looks for the sick. That he did not come for the righteous but for the sick sinners to repent and get saved. With this, in, with this text in mind, many have been brought into brotherhood with a heavy load of sin in order to get saved and get out of hell, but they must refrain from sin. They must repent wholeheartedly now for survival for survival into eternal life in heaven brother out of the cross and star is the kingdom of god it is for the righteous ones that it is for the righteous ones no lawless fellow has any share in this kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice instead of spending your money celebrating sumptuous feasts why do you not refrain from sin why do you not repent and get saved from this adulterous generation instead of suffering yourself in fasting for a number of days and nights and going to unnecessary ministerial tours why not refrain from sins instead of becoming regular confessions confessors of sin why not heed god's instruction now and live for it is written for if they did not escape from him who begged and from him who was giving divine warning upon earth how much more shall they not escape if they turn away from him who speaks from heaven you are obliged to refrain from sin god gives us life protects and heals us and bestows all good gifts on us there is every reason then why we should and must obey God. It is because of this fact why you are given this gospel. God has given you all that you need for your daily sustenance. Why then do you choose to go to hellfire? If you were to abide by the gospel of Christ, you would not spend your time going about telling people that the leader of brotherhood is God, Christ or an angel. This is a wasteful exercise. All that you are required to do is to practice the words of God and get saved. It is written that not all those who call me Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom of God but only those who practice the words of God. The choice is before you now. Either you abide by the instructions of God and enjoy life in God's kingdom, or practice lawlessness and be condemned into hell. Why do you choose to go to hell? You do not come here to work for anybody or for the interest of anyone. You are here to save your soul. God and his Christ are here to save you. Many people think that if they refrain from fornication, adultery, stealing or telling lies, they are doing another person any favor. 
Not at all. It is for your own good and welfare. It is for the salvation of your soul. Why? For under no circumstances shall a sinner go unpunished. The world is full of blind and crippled leaders. Satan invites you into his organization with false promises. You are told that if you pay your church dues, partake in the so-called communion and be baptized, that you are saved and that when you die you are going straight to heaven. This is an absolute falsehood. Others believe that to carry the Bible about parading in front of every door and in every street in pretense of preaching that they are saved, even though they do not live up to what they preach. This is also another self-deceit. Any person who commits those things mentioned in the first Bible lesson is in hell now. Read the first Bible lesson distinctively so that you may have discernment. All those who practice such things will not inherit God's kingdom. Reaping what you sowed. This gospel will save you just as it happened to that robber on the cross. For one of the evil doers on the cross began to say abusively to Christ, You are Christ, are you not? Save yourself and us. But the other robber rebuked him and said, Do you not fear God at all? Know that you are in the same judgment. We indeed justly so, for we are receiving in full what we deserve for the things we did. That But this man did nothing wrong. At this point, he pleaded with Christ to remember him for good. It is your place now, through this gospel, to take stock of yourself and know that all that befalls you daily are due to the sins you commit. For example, I mentioned that marriage is hell in one of the gospels. That fact still stands true. If you are involved in this marriage contract, do not complain to anyone about the consequences of its torment. You know that Christ is the only bridegroom. Why do you come to report to Christ when you have stolen a woman? Yes, his wife from him. You must suffer the penalty. There is no amount of fasting that can take away the sufferings of this hell. This is the judgment. Your sufferings are no part of God's service. You are receiving in full what you deserve because the scripture says that those who are counted worthy to partake in this new system of things neither marry nor are given in marriage. If you turn a deaf ear to this instruction and marry then you must be prepared to face the heat of fire from this hell. Do not call on God either. Do not complain to anyone. You must reap what you have sowed. You who take fornication for your hobby, why do you complain when you are struck with the fire of hell? You who commit adultery as you take breakfast, be prepared to face the consequences of it. Tell no one about it. Do not complain. Accept the blows. This is what you wanted. It is so also with the thieves. Continue to steal, but know that you are in hell. There is no turning off the shadow from here. You must drink your cup of evil. 
there is no sense for a thief to seek a defense. He is already in hell. Consider from your youth all the sufferings that you have received because of the sins that you commit. Are these sufferings not enough? Listen to the Bible lesson, first Bible lesson. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. What? Do you not know that unrighteous persons will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be misled. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men kept for unnatural purposes, nor thieves, nor greedy persons, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit God's kingdom. Just as I have already told you, hell is a condition of suffering, a state of perpetual punishment, afflictions, tribulation, gnashing of teeth, poverty, distress, and torture of extraordinary kind. It is a place of torment where you will look for life but will not see it, and pray to die but death flee from you. It is a terrible condition ever thought of. Stealing, fighting, murdering, anger, lying, hatred, lawlessness, in short, all manners of evil are found in hell. Ask the soothsayers, the sorcerers, fornicators, and adulterers whether they have the required joy and happiness. Anyone who seduces another person's wife cannot have rest and peace of mind. He lives in fear, eats in fear, walks in fear, is in hell or someone that defies another person's daughter. He can never have peace of mind. He is in hellfire, poor soul. He lives in fear, moves about in fear, and perhaps died in fear. The world is on fire. In every home, the fire is blazing high, but of course, without visible flames, nothing physical can extinguish this fire. The only capable extinguisher for one to follow the instructions of God. The sins of mankind now reaches the climax. The fire is perfectly heated now for lawless fellows. You want to get rich you who want to get rich overnight and steal another person's money, have you actually enjoyed what you stole? You who indulge in dubious ways of getting money, either by immoral conduct or otherwise, have you enjoyed this money? There is no enjoyment in hell. You do not even get to hell with these things that you possess. The fire quickly consumes them. Today. Thieves are shot because of the increase in highway robbery. The prisons are full of lawless men. The hospital beds are, in, are insufficient because of diseases due to immoral conduct. The doctors are on the run. The courts are filled with cases that are not able to be disposed of. Retirements, dismissals, Terminations with immediate effect are prevalent everywhere. Yet you are warned to refrain from sin, but you refuse. Even as you are here in brotherhood, if you are a fornicator or immoral person, know that you are in hell. What caused a person to steal, fornicate, or drink wine? It is mere greed, lust, selfishness. Unless you refrain from these things, you will have no share in this kingdom of God. But someone may say, I want to be myself in one way or the other. Someone to enjoy themselves. There is no happiness or enjoyment in hellfire. 
It was because Christ preached to the people saying, All those who are loaded with heavy burdens should come to him and he would give them rest. That made many people rush to, to him, fornicators, drunkards, adulterers and all types of persons rushed to him. But no sooner had Christ given them his solid, this solid food, that unless they ate the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, they would not have life in themselves that many started to grumble, murmur, and leave him. According to the report, they said, This speech is shocking. Who can listen to it? Yes, who can eat the flesh of someone and drink his blood? Impossible, they concluded and went away. The gospel is the beginning and the end. If you want to be safe, practice it. But if you have signed a bond with Satan and you are bent on committing sins, if you do not come here to be safe but to corrupt those that are here, the best thing for you to do, since you have concluded like these people of old that what you are hearing from the gospel is impractical, you better stay out and face the penalty that is due to you. All I know, heaven and earth will pass away, but no particle of the word of God shall pass away until all be fulfilled. God had sworn by his name that all those who practice these sinful things will not enter into his rest. God is the word. His word is the truth and his pronouncements are irrevocable. When you have time, examine these texts carefully. If you are suffering, sick or afflicted, know that your name is on the list of those who are in hell. If you are an angry fellow, a liar, know that your name is there in hell. You have yourself to blame for being disobedient to God's instruction. All evildoers should not ask God for any help. If you want to be free from all your sickness, refrain from anger, immorality, and live with God your Creator. Christ came and preached this gospel, but people rejected it. Today, no church denomination attaches importance to Bible principles. People claim to be Christian, the people of God, but they do not know who Christ is, nor follow his instruction. You have yourself to blame. May we read the second Bible lesson. Second lesson, Galatians chapter 5, verses 20 to 21. Idolatry, the practice of spiritism, hatred, strife, Jealousy, fits of anger, covetousness, contentious contention, division, sex, envies, drunken bouts, revileries, revelries, and things like those. As to these things, I am forewarning you the same way that I did forewarn you that those who practice such things will not inherit God's kingdom. If you are hardened in mind and remain here in brotherhood and commit sin, despite this vital warning, know that you are in hell. Does it not surprise you to hear that someone is attacked by evil forces right in the altar or in the battle? On the other hand, that there is a person in the bush enjoying his sleep undisturbed by anyone, this or this, this shows that someone can be in the presence of God and yet in hell. I do not say that you must come to brotherhood, 
But what I am saying is, wherever you are, if you practice these things mentioned in the three texts of this gospel, you are in hell, and the kingdom of God is not for you. On the other hand, I can see that many of you that are here are in heaven, while others are in deep hell. Those who, though in brotherhood, are in hell, are those who do not care to receive and practice the instructions given them from God's word. They brush them away by saying, as the Father likes it. You must understand that hell is everywhere. If you practice what is good, wherever you are, you are in heaven. If you practice what is evil, no matter where you are, you are in hell. God, go and tell the world that all evildoers are now in hell. Why sympathize with the sick or someone who has got into trouble? Rather, advise him to repent, confess his sins, and refrain from sin, so that all will be well. For this reason, it is written, Is there anyone sick among you? Let him call the elders of the church and then pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will make the indisposed one well, and the Lord will raise him up. Also, if he has committed sins, it will be forgiven him. This is no hospital business. It does not require any blood magic priests. The black magic priests themselves do not have peace. There is no point in saying that you will refrain from sin gradually. You cannot continue in sin and the grace of God abound in you. For if a person like David did not escape the punishment for taking someone's wife, who are you to evade God's judicial judgment? All what you, all what God told David happened to him because of taking Uriah's wife. David did not escape from any of the punishments. So why then are you toying with sin? When you refrain from sin, all your troubles will be over. Do not be afraid of the angels, spirits, or any person, but flee fornication, adultery, stealing, anger, telling lies, cheating. Flee sin, because anything short of this leads to hell. But if you would discern what yourself, what yourself are, you would not be judged. However, you are judged, you are disciplined by the Lord, that you may not be condemned with the world. For example, in the prison yard, there are those who are for one day imprisonment. Such persons are not tortured at all. They are given all delicious dishes and cared for until that one day. Whereas there are those who may be there for two or three weeks but are punished and tortured and then freed after this period of discipline. The latter refers to the children of God, while the former refers to the children of the world. When the children of God commit sin, they are punished and restored, unlike those of the world who will continue to enjoy themselves through, though in sin, until the one day condemnation. These one day prisoners may continue to mock you when they see that you are being disciplined. There are those 
whose sins are revealed immediately and they are punished, whereas there are others whose sins are concealed and later will become manifest. Too late to amend. Too late to be corrected. Condemnation. Today, there are people who are good, but they are rejected of men. After their lifetime, their good works will become manifest and people will speak well of them. This happened in the case of Christ. He was killed as a lawbreaker and troublemaker, but today he is being searched for. He is called the good friend of mankind. He is in heaven, and so it is with everyone who abides in his words. Wherever you are, even if you put on the white robe all over your body, if you commit sin, you are in hell. You should not be surprised, therefore, if you see people committing all sorts of abominations, even before the altar or in the house of God. Such people are in hell. A fornicator, a thief, a drunkard has no respect for anyone. They are dangerous persons. When you see them, take care of yourselves. You have heard that Satan said he would not remain alone in the bottomless pit. Who are with Satan? Are they not the fornicators, the thieves, the adulterers, murderers, and all lawless people? They campaign for people to join their company. Therefore, beware of these men. The drunkards will always give you the reason why they drink. No good person will take snuff and eat tobacco. It is, say, it is stated, give wine to the one who is about to perish and drink to those who are bitter of soul. Let them drink and forget their poverty and let them remember no more. Of course, under the influence of alcohol, they may forget their sorrows and poverty, but when they become normal, their problems will surely come back to their headache. So you can see that wines or drinks are not for good people, especially not for the children of God. If you see men and women running, up, running around like sex maniacs, it is because they are in hell. And of course, no one can help you in hell. The heat of the fire in hell is the cause of your high temperature and such high fever that sometimes could cause a wet cloth to become dry when it is placed on your body. Do not even ask yourself where this heat comes from without any flames in, in your body. Man, you are in hell. Why do you not do something now to erase your name from the list of those in hell? It is because you were in hell while in the world that you were requested to confess your sins and repent of your evil course and get baptized, removing you from hell into God's kingdom. May we read the golden text. Golden text, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But as for the cowards and those without faith and those who are disgusting in their faith and murderers and fornicators and those practicing spiritism and idolaters and all the liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. This means the second death. Let no one deceive you. All those who practice these things have no share in heaven. Their destination is in hell. Show them those, show them those who will go to heaven and those who will go to hell. All those in brotherhood who are still complaining of sickness, affliction, tribulations, etc. 
are not yet in brotherhood, they are still in, in hell. Although here in brotherhood, poor souls, if they can simply discern what hell and heaven are, if they could but abide with God's instruction, this would erase their name from hell and be written here in the kingdom of God. You who believe in the eating of communion as a guarantee of salvation, you who believe in baptism as a sacrament, do you know what is the actual communion as taught by Christ? This bread is the word of God. You must eat the word of God. That blood is the suffering that comes through the practice of the word of God. Yes, as for your contest against sin, you have not started until you have shed blood. This is the time for you to enroll your name in the book of life so that it may go well with you. Today in the world, you may look at some people as wealthy people, blessed with children, but you do not know that there is a canker worm in them. Remove Jonah from the boat so that the boat may move. Yes, unless you take away those things that are meant for destruction that are now in you, you cannot, you cannot escape God's punishment. You Jonah class, repent now, otherwise you will have no peace. Do not hope to repent in hell. Now is, the accept now is the acceptable time for salvation. Evildoers are headstrong and disobedient. Fornicators and thieves have no need for church services. They do not see any good in worshiping God. Someone will say, I have been, I have been a member of all the churches. Is that a good report for someone to stay? To, is that a good report for someone to say that he has been a member of all the churches? Or someone who say, I have toured the world in search of power. Why not refrain from lawless practices and have God and have God's favor now? Or do you prefer to be burnt? by this fire how long will you choose to remain there it is not the wish of my father that any of you should perish but that you should repent and get saved this gospel is for that purpose to help you out of hell if you reject this gospel there is no alternative it means that you have been destined for hell. Decide now or never. Be transformed by making up your minds to do God's will. If the people of old were to have this gospel, do you think that they would have chosen to be destroyed? But if you now are determined to refuse the warning contained in this gospel, I am confident I'm convinced that that I'm con I am confident and convinced that millions who are now on their way into this kingdom who have already got themselves prepared for this glorious treasure in heaven will they will enjoy these eternal blessings now and forevermore. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father.